Okay. Uh, thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining our weekly connect, uh, where we share information, we share knowledge in terms of Salesforce and all other aspects with respect to Salesforce. So thanks for joining. Um, this is our motto every week, like each one teach one, where a single person shares his knowledge on the knowledge he has or the knowledge he has learned, and then you guys can go explore teach to some other person who comes reaches out to you on a particular topic. So that's the main uh, intention of this. And uh, on that note, uh, we'll get started. So today's topic, uh, to start with, it's a bit complex. So what uh, I've thought is I'll break them down into uh, two or three chapters, uh, hopefully two. If not, if I see more information needs to be squeezed in, then I'll make it a three chapter type of a session. So this session, we'll just talk about the introduction and why Salesforce has come up with this topic and how useful is this in handling the business, okay? So the title says Entitlements and Milestones. So this is like a beginning chapter where you'll have just a graphical or a pictorial idea of what actually happens. And then in the further sessions, we'll go ahead with the working model where it's all set up. And you can see uh, from you know the beginning to how it evolves in terms of the process and how it's handled within the system in actual business case. Okay. So on that note, so why entitlements and milestones? Uh, we'll just start with a, an example so that everyone can understand and they can correlate. So I'll, I'll take an example of an Amazon app in terms of customer service. So there are two types of users in Amazon, right? So normal users and prime users. I hope everyone are aware. So I want you guys to tell what did you observe as differences when you're a normal user or you're a prime user. Don't go to the OTT part, but it's more about placing orders and how you see that difference. Anybody? Fast delivery. Yeah, okay. fast delivery. Ideally, Sometimes. there are more and early, and early uh, word, early word options. Okay. Some products are not available for normal customers, but for Prime, they are available. Okay. And customer support also will be different, right? I think. Correct. For, okay. for Prime membership. And obviously, it's chargeable as well, Prime customers. Okay. Yeah, that delivery charges won't be there for the primary membership work. Agreed. Anything else? In terms of price, in terms of sales, in terms of discounts. Yeah. Of uh, Thanks, guys. I think uh, we've put in some points, some important points where it's about the way we see things in the system or the way we get data and in, uh, like in terms of if you are prime customers, how we see the data in terms of the products. Like we can see it earlier, we can buy it earlier. And that's how the uh, customer services uh, respond as well, right? In terms of delivery, in terms of time and when we can get it and all that. So what you see here is, um, it's more like this aggregate in terms of the way, so in terms of investment, in terms of the way we want the model to work. That's how they've streamlined it between normal users and uh, prime users, right? On the same note, uh, another example, we suppose um, there's a servicing shop which offers services, right? In terms of a car service. So it does the same thing. Like you buy a package uh, for three years, the service will be different. Well, they'll do some add-ons as well on that. I'm saying, sir, if you take it for three years, this will be the way it operates. If you just take it for a single service, this is the way it operates and there'll be overheads on top of whatever service they have provided, right? So Salesforce has thought about this and it has defined it in service cloud in terms of what we call as entitlements and milestones. Before we go ahead and start with that, the first part is to understand what is an SLA. So SLA, as people know, it's it's called uh, service level agreements. It's it's more like defining an agreement between the business providers and the customers who are uh, availing those services. And a customer is always happy when he knows the information that he's seeking for. Like if I have an issue, like how how quickly can you turn it around and uh, give a resolution, right? So there are certain key points or key performance indicators which define in the way in which the customer service works. Okay, so SLS are defined in terms of business and the customer. That's when uh, the customer is likely to provide or use more of that business 
as a service for him okay and there are also ways in which you, you can see like uh, in terms of priority and severity if you see uh, it's just a replacement issue right in terms of a delivery if it's just a replacement issue it can still wait right you don't have to get it replaced then and there so that is called uh, the priority and the severity of that particular issue that the customer is facing right now and they try to segregate within the system of how to channel it based on a priority or a severity just giving an example like in terms of a damaged product which you need very uh, urgent so they'll do a replacement quicker than uh, taking it back again so they'll try to channel it in such a way that they define these agreements with the customer i hope you've got the business case of what uh, we are getting to so in terms of salesforce um, it defines entitlements in terms of different models there are certain models that have been provided uh, which we'll go through so the first one is entitlements only it is like the very basic where uh, you provide a service only based on the warranty like you buy it for a year you get service only for a year not beyond that okay so that's how this type of model works the second one entitlement with contracts the name suggests that it's based on a contract uh, say suppose if you buy three products this uh, particular product you have a contract where you have to provide additional uh, services or support that particular account or product okay so that is one type of a model and the third one is service contracts together with line items this is at a more granular level where um, they define at each level like the product or the place or uh, where it has to be uh, i mean the support should be more so those channels in terms of warranties in terms of subscriptions everything is analyzed take considered in order to handle this particular entitlement model and this is very complex not seen much of use of this but in big enterprise applications to provide service to customers they definitely go ahead with this so here is a simple chart uh, just to visualize how these type of models work and uh, what type of services it provides to the customers if you take just entitlements only it is only confined uh, to the product warranty once the warranty is done it will not uh, provide any support anymore and if you go to service contracts there are some additional ones where renewal process needs to be there long support is offered uh, based on the tenure uh, those are some of the considerations for this and if you go to entitlements plus service contract plus line item there it will go to a granular level where it talks about assets related to products of that particular account what uh, i mean have a check on what are the um, products which the customer is ma mainly trying to procure uh, in terms of business so those additional things will be there as part of this support where they'll provide additional support based on the type of model defined so yeah coming to setting up of an entitlement process this is where salesforce starts in terms of uh, service cloud where this is like a whole package where you talk about your milestones sls everything confined together uh, into a system which should handle every scenario in terms of a product escalation and account escalation so these are the four important stages where you do the entitlement process setup first thing always is the milestone so what is milestone milestone is more like defining the workaround time in how many hours can you actually uh, resolve this particular issue it can be a four day uh, or four hour support it can be an eight hour support it will be a two day support so those are milestones which have to be defined for any process that is where the customer is more interested to analyze if i get an issue how quickly can you get the resolution for it so that's the key to uh, any entitlement process where you have to create a milestone and there are different sections in which you can provide the hours uh, like how many hours like what is the priority or uh, the band in which you can segregate uh, a particular uh, issue being raised okay so milestone is very important that is the first point and the second one is creating an entitlement process now this is a setup within the uh, salesforce system in service cloud where you have to first enable your entitlement uh, settings in order to create this process so in a brief i don't want to go into those details because those setup and all i'll be providing them in the next session where we'll see a working model of this entire put together okay so in brief uh, this entitlement process is more about giving conditions of when a particular case to, should be handled and to which stream should it be navigating to okay in terms of channels like they'll be uh, 
an example of say a case uh, goes to this particular channel on a creation day or a case gets escalated to this channel after a particular time span where a milestone is not met okay so these are some considerations in which they uh, provide a step by step process with certain conditions defined so that is the entitlement process now adding the milestone to the entitlement process is important because uh, entitlement is more giving the condition milestone is uh, giving the time frame those two put together and define your process in which you are handling uh, each request coming in and at what instance is it like a 24 hour support is it like a in a limited period where they are trying to handle this uh, case that is coming in so those are certain conditions in which when they uh, are integrated together you can see on a single entitlement screen you can see the milestones in terms of time frames like a 4 hour period or a day period or a 48 period etc etc the first uh, step is adding workflow actions now why do we add workflow actions is to remind that the sls are getting breached or are we uh, closing cases within the sls or is it uh, it's more like cautioning or warning or you know trying to escalate uh, based on a particular condition so those are the types of workflows and the three things that you see here this is more like a success that it's been completed within the stipulated time this is more like giving a warning that it is coming close and you got to take action on it and this is more like a uh, cautioning saying it's 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 red flag where it is already crossed the milestone and it is still not attended so there are certain actions which we try to define as part of this setup so that everyone who is uh, see a part of or an account or a contact part of that entitlement process will be able to see this and try to analyze okay something is nearby you got to uh, go ahead and address it so that's how they try to check this complete process okay uh, important thing uh, in terms of entitlement processes you can create a, a maximum of 1000 in the salesforce system and uh, you can associate milestones up to 10 to a particular entitlement process guys this is important in terms of the next step of how the working models look like so any questions here uh, will be appreciated Prashant, uh, this is something like an after sales uh, process that gets uh, updated on Facebook. Correct. So it is it is with the service cloud. Yes, like this is really important uh, in in order to pictureize as to how the setup is done and really important to analyze and go to. So any questions? In it it might be an easy or a simple one. so when this process will come like before uh, setting up case i mean uh service cloud uh, we will do all this prior uh, to this is need to be when yeah this is uh, this will be prior to a case being uh, raised okay it's more like a pre process uh, before a case is being raised because once the customer starts using that business uh, he will definitely have blockers like any service ticket which you see it's, it's you can consider it as a case and they will definitely want a work around time on it right same situation here where if they see any discrepancy they'll go reach out to the customer care and based on uh, the type of model that is defined the entitlement model which we've, we've discussed earlier they'll try to see if okay whether it falls into that model what kind of support can we provide to that particular customer that's what they'll try to uh, check and then they'll raise a case internally tech yeah uh, i want to add uh, something prashant technically speaking in this entitlement rules will fire along with the case but what about the sla sla will be followed by the order so i can say sla is also involved in sales whenever an opportunity is closed and an order or a contract or created so this sls will be generated uh, between the customer and the business business correct yeah but uh, this entitlement process or the rules will be uh, fired uh, during the case in case creation uh, on that note uh, moving to the last part of this like how how to use the entitlement process so in salesforce in service cloud rather uh, there is a setup which uh, we just have for now two predefined processes one is phone support one is email support these are called as entitlement templates which can be predefined and associated to contacts or they are associated to accounts 
So whenever a customer calls and says, okay, I have this particular issue, the phone support uh, takes the call. They'll first go check in the account what type of model is there, whether they are entitled for a phone support or not. Based on that, they go ahead, take those uh, steps or discussion steps and create a case saying, okay, this particular uh, account has this particular model. So uh, we can go ahead and uh, create a case. So that's what this complete step shows, like apply uh, entitlement process to a customer's en entitlement. So this is where they check what type of support that particular account or a contact has. And then they create a case from that entitlement itself. Uh, and uh, yeah, that, that's how uh, the process is defined, the initial process. So the case comes in. Good. Uh, the first step here says creating a milestone wherein there is a case which is raised, right? No, no, no. This is just a step. This is no way related to a case. It's okay. just milestone is a separate entity. Don't uh, mix those two to a case. These are time periods which we define. It is not a case. Okay. 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 Got it. Yeah. So you define a time period, you add it to an entitlement process, which will tell you, okay, this is a process or the standard model in which these, uh, uh, the particular account is being operated. Then they add that milestone to the process to uh, make everyone see. So when you add a milestone on that entitlement process, you can see a time frame uh, defined because of those milestones added. Like okay. it will be a four hour window, this is the milestone. It will be a two day window, this is the milestone. So okay. based on those milestones, uh, milestones as an integrated package, we uh, define rules. If it's a success, if it's a warning, or if it's breached. Okay. And the next step is that's what they'll say based on that support and the milestone that they see associated to an account. This is associated to an account. It can be associated to a case, account, contact. I think uh, there's several other uh, where these can be associated. I think they can be associated to contracts as well. So all these places uh, they go ahead and check so when they instantly get a call so everyone i i hope they're aware of the uh, the mobile system that operates like any third party app when you get a call you can always reference to your accounts or your contact yes. it shows up in the system so they check that they'll see these uh, entitlements okay this is what is their model they'll go ahead and if they are uh, entitled to phone support they'll go ahead and create a case based on the phone request. Or they'll say you have to raise an email because because of that uh, template being used or associated uh, to a particular account. That's how it operates. So if it's okay. a phone support type of a template uh, entitled to an account, they go ahead and create a case based on a phone request or phone support. So, they, so the data into this entitlement object that comes based on a phone support, is it? Is it not from any form or anything? It, it comes from phone support where they take certain uh, the description or the call recording is always captured, right? They'll take that as a basis yeah. and they'll add it to a case. So it can be a recording, okay. writing, though they speak, uh, spoke about, it can be anything. So they create this manually based on their call. Manually or there's a way in which uh, you, you set up a system where it can be auto-created, like how... Uh, okay. Web to case works, yeah. Okay, is it not related to type of the customer? It is, it is. That's what I'm saying. SLS will be uh, defined based on customers as well, and even the support. There'll be, uh, I mean, it's a vast topic, uh, Harita. On the question, there'll be different queues to which the cases go. There'll be uh, support uh, levels to which the cases go. It can be like an example: platinum, gold, silver. Like silver will be only during a day support gold will be like uh, uh, even the offers time of support platinum will be like 24 hour support uh, it can be a region uh, domain whatever like uh, in terms of uh, what is a manufacturing divisions or any division so it, it's a vast area like support can be at different levels in the way you say as a great in the system okay among which uh, phone is uh, one one type of support no, phone will be there for everything, right? This is more like a template, Hatha. Don't uh, confuse that to the platinum level. Like, it will be additional benefits type of a thing. Phone can be even the basic as well. So basic, I, I believe it to be an email, but a phone is also basic in the system. You can, based on the package of the model defined, like uh, you can provide that support. Okay. 
So it's it's more like one of the template defined in the system. Just an example. Definitely, yeah. On those levels, some will be provided. Say, Silver will be provided only with email support, like some of our third-party apps, which only support through emails. So that's one type of support. So apply the entitlement process, entitlement process of the business to customers' entitlement. Oh, I mean, what does that mean? Apply the entitlement process to the customers' entitlement. Correct. So uh, based on an SLA, uh, the customer uh, talks to the business and uh, they define SLAs, right? Based on those, they create a milestone process with the entitlement that is aligned or associated to an account. Whenever you get a call, they'll go check that account. What type of an entitlement model is there? So a customer calls for an issue to an agent. Okay. Agent goes ahead, checks the account, saying what type of entitlement is associated to that particular account. Okay. You see, okay, are these guys uh, aligned for a phone support? They'll go ahead and uh, take that as a phone support case and they'll get, create a case. If they do not see that entitlement, they'll go ahead and say there's another medium in which probably you have to shoot an email and uh, we are not providing phone support or they might not even take those calls and they'll divert it to another division. So that's how it operates. So uh, moving on, just a sample, uh, what is a snapshot which shows like, in service setup, uh, where do you find these uh, four controls? Uh, if you type entitlement, this is these four are the sections for complete entitlement management process. Entitlement processes we have discussed. Uh, it is more like a step to step um, giving conditions and defining a process. Entitlement settings is the first step, actually. Uh, I shouldn't go to this. Whenever you search entitlement management for a new org, you won't see all these options unless you enable the entitlement settings. Similar with every other setup, be it currency or et cetera, et cetera. So similar case works for this. You got to enable it. Then you'll see processes being shown up, templates being shown up, milestones being shown up. And that's how we've defined all those and we've discussed in the process. Is this, gen is this available? I mean, is this is this a free one or setup is free, but uh, up to what level can it be used? Uh, I think Roshan or Bala should uh, comment on that. But setup uh, is, is that the edition, sir? Which edition is it a professional? No, edition? so it comes along with the uh, and uh, so typically when you take a uh, service, sorry, any Salesforce license, so this comes along with the enterprise service cloud uh, features. Uh, so they are expensive. Obviously, service cloud feature is expensive. And these ones do come along uh, with the service cloud feature. So you don't pay for entitlement uh, setup as such. It's there okay. whether you want to use it or not is an option, but it's there. Bala, any thoughts? I hope yeah. I'm right. Yeah. yeah, it's that's there. what it is. Yeah, setup we can do. Yeah, beyond that, how we want to use it and all that, the extensive uh, approach to it, uh, that, yeah, probably. So that, that's the more technical of part of how we set this up. But the ability to set it up, set it this, this option of uh, having entitlements in your org is, is there in any service cloud yes. or in any service cloud org. Yes. Yeah. This is from the DevOps, Sushma. Just to be mm, yeah, okay. Got it, yeah. So if we have options here, I mean, on setup, we are creating this entitlement process, right? The milestone. Then from mm. here, from here what, what we have to do is we need to link. I mean, for, from here itself, we are going to create records, right? Yeah. Process. I wanted to cover that in the next one, but uh, Naveen, uh, okay. you, once you enable the settings, you'll have various options, whether it has to be an account case relation, account contact relation, account case contact relation, there'll be certain uh, check boxes. You can check in terms okay. of uh, varieties, okay? Processes is more like uh, giving the conditions for the case, like when it's open, go to this channel, when it's open, go this way, uh, and you're just routing it. Uh, templates is more like what you have discussed. It's more like uh, giving web support, uh, the email support, the phone support. Those are the templates which you can define. As of now, in our setup, we have just phone and uh, email. Okay. And my instance, are default, right? Yeah, these are default by default template. templates. Okay. Yes. Yes. And okay. Prashant, uh, is this something that can be, that is available in the development org for us to just check through, read yes. through, and all? Yes. Okay. This is from my develop. I'm not oh. taking this from any edition. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just to talk about is this for me, uh, yes. definitely for everyone who wants to understand service cloud to understand how the business operates. So one level is the sales. The second level is how are we providing that customer support? 
it's really important to know both the ends whenever you are uh, trying to uh, go through salesforce okay sales is one aspect service is another aspect and this just um, i've written as a short note like it's it's always a yeah. key for any business to grow and sustain a simple example last week we went to a restaurant it was it is a good restaurant uh, with great reviews but it is not the same experience for everyone we went into the restaurant it was very crowded busy and the service was getting delayed so definitely it will create a perspective so same is the case with business if you cannot if you provide a good uh, solution you provide a good uh, sales platform but if you do not have the service to it it will go down the drain any any day same is the case with third party apps i hope uh, some of you guys who have worked on uh, have that experience of who provide better support who cannot provide support so same is the case here yeah so people are wondering what support is referring to uh, we work with various app exchange products in the recent past panadoc uh, zoom uh docusign twilio yeah. and you you have personally experienced how their response times have so much an impact on your planning and your deliverables that you have towards the end client right so though though they are all great products everybody they have a lot of money they, they make there so many uh, hundreds and thousands of installs on on sales for app exchange all of these which i mentioned docusign twilio uh panadoc but their supports actually make a huge difference so uh, it makes a difference so somebody asks us like okay i would maybe it's 10 dollars extra but i still go for this xyz because i know if there's a problem i can get this resolved in 4 hours or, or at least 24 hours i know that my problem is going to be resolved uh, compared to that of an abc where uh, support takes 3 days to just respond and understand what we are going through so uh you can totally relate to that when you talk about service or any of these entitlement milestones slas because there could be a premium customer who's paying who probably has purchased a 500 licenses of an xyz product which is a great product but the business actually gets like literally gets stopped if uh the app is not performing the way it's supposed to and it comes down to us as an individual to solve that problem where we really dependent on the support team so yeah that is a good we to relate to people who are working and people who are not working not work with app exchange one you can ignore that or maybe look at this as a learning of how service response time or any of this the entire story which was built today makes a huge difference in in purchasing in, uh, you know it, it has a huge impact in purchase decision like like last week i was looking at an air conditioner to buy and the first question i was asking around here on the table was like okay have you guys used this uh, i know the product is good japanese lloyd and daikin and things like that but the first question i would ask is okay can i is the servicing good enough for me to actually go and put in that money to uh, be, be assured that okay if there is something going wrong i know there's somebody who can come and look into this and get this sorted right so uh, yeah so it, it it goes to that level of same okay, purchase decisions are also made uh, based on the per service level that is uh, service experience that is provided to the customers So, like uh, I work with Twilio and uh, DocuSign uh, support. So um, it's like uh, for Twilio, as a, as it is a trial account, uh, we have only email support. Is is that all these are come under these entitlements, right? Then okay, uh, I'll skip that. Uh, for but uh, I understood like email is the only way. What they've said, so definitely yeah. Uh, i think uh, that you can correlate that way you are asking the correlation only right or you are asking is there another way to reach out it's a correlation no, no, i'm asking because i'm de- e- what yeah, yeah. we find like so so and so subscribe uh, subscribe subscription has this kind of service so it's it's more like a combination of uh, a business gimmick as well as uh, usability uh, harta generally a trial they won't uh, expand the usage to uh, a large extent because they just want you to see how the usability is and all that and uh, if that solves your problem definitely you'll go ahead and uh, you'll try to understand what are more aspects to this particular product that's being used what all uh, else can it do like i can give an example like uh, when i initially started with an app called sms360 similar to twilio it's an sms app but uh, we never knew that it also could do the call service 
okay later we understood because they've never promoted that in the site but uh, we've read somewhere that it does do that right so that's when we go to the support they'll extend it to another uh, person saying these are what we can offer at part of uh, that call support as well so it's, it's always like in terms of branding it has to be there even there you need support to tell okay this also can be done right that is what service is all about yeah that discussion we are doing uh, i mean business is doing in this area like entertainments and uh, correct yeah. correct so if i didn't have that call service i would have never used that app right i would have gone to ring central with us both right so mm -hmm. it is just an option of what the services are offered to and how quickly can support be provided if you do not have support for a great app definitely won't be using that like i think that's going too deep into a specific example but what are, what we're trying to say here is salesforce has given very uh, good set of critical options which can help an organization build a great service team or service system to ensure their end users are happy think of it that way so in this case that the app exchange was probably just an example because prashant mentioned i took it forward and said okay you, you personally experienced it uh, from a service respect right but if you really think from an enterprise way uh, if you are implementing salesforce for let's say uh, a bank the bank if they want to say okay we want to have the best customer service for our end users so salesforce is saying okay so you know what as a product we've got some great features such as these which will help you if you have the right processes in place our systems or our as our product is capable of putting those processes in uh, in place in the product and automate a lot of things to make sure that your service team uh, can seamlessly uh, work with your customers and uh, have the best customer experience possible uh, from a product perspective so that's that's the level you have to look at uh, the statement of how is this service important because i would i actually go to a, an xyz bank depending on how easy it is for me to resolve a query there are banks where if you're stuck you just wait for like you just pray to god and say okay have my query resolved because you don't know how it is going to happen and then there are banks where you very clearly know if i can if i go there to the branch or if i make this phone call or i go to website and raise a ticket i know my query is going to get resolved in 24 hours or 48 hours even if i'm not a normal customer so that so the example i was trying to give was that like your service experience actually has your purchase has an impact on your purchase uh, uh, decision it's and salesforce as a product through these features is giving that option to the customers i hope that i hope i have tried to put it uh, in a perspective of everything that we are trying to say here i am done with the session version so a quick summary like we've already discussed uh, what we've gone through the session it's most about knowing entitlement models some of the entitlement models milestones slas how you set up the entitlement process and how you start or how agents use that entitlement process associated to accounts contacts or you know, contracts and whatever is the ask yeah that's pretty much it uh, yeah i think if we are ready for kahoot you wanted to avoid that yeah go ahead Get so question everything is short time i have not uh, taken anything for one minute so the questions were short so i think that was enough time for answering yeah. yes. I'd definitely say a good question uh, because more of a revision. Yeah, most people got it right. Okay, people have got it wrong. Any any doubts on this? Of why it's answered uh, for the first option? I think it's just education, Prashant. I think we just stayed forward. Like their understanding was probably not correct, not aligned in what was described. So this is okay. educating and re re revising uh, that part. Yeah. 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 So just an FYI, uh, this is uh, entitlement process based. Okay. Starting with the next one, the only next is okay. Yeah, that's when you see. Uh, okay. 
multi select multi select i hope i have done all double points okay <laughs> i played safe i chose only two those two are correct i think it was a good question people still got confused so. no so i think it needs some explanation so, so mm. maybe repeat this part there were i think there was three right entitlements three? only and there were right. service contracts entitlements right. only entitlements with service contracts uh, contracts and, and entitlements with service contracts and line items you will see this again next week i mean uh, in the in the actual setup the how part you will again definitely see these options on your screen yes. okay i don't remember this answer i gone with i've gone with that option yes no no it's not luck i so for me it's more of uh, recollecting what i did a long time ago yeah it is 10 i think prashant also mentioned this like 10 yeah. is the limit yeah. when i was discussing the process i mentioned like 1000 can be the process limit and uh, each process can have a max of uh, 10 milestones 10 milestones Okay. Next, the consistency should be the result. Uh, But this needs internet more than consistency. Actually, this came as a question in the session itself. I'm glad I added. Let's see if I'm still. No, I'm. I'm. I'm still at the same place. Everybody is at the same place. Ask this is a simple question. Multi-select double point. Why is every multi-select doesn't seem to be getting known? Are we trying? Ah, great, great question. Oh shit! I should have selected more. I was in a hurry of. Answer, please. <laughs> Answer is uh, everything except uh, addition. No, so no. I'll just take a moment. So basically, guys, uh, audit trail is something in Salesforce, which is by default there. So whenever you're in a situation where you want to know uh, about a change that has happened, you're like, it's like more of uh, an investigation that you want to do. Like, who made this change? When did this happen? So you can actually download a huge report. It's like a log. It's literally like a log of of uh, of everything that happens in the system. It's it's too big too big a log, and so that's why it's not regularly taken out. It's not advisable unless you really are doing an audit, saying okay who's so it it as the name goes, it's an audit of the system. So if, if, if organizations are going through audit and say I want to see who made this change on this one, or who's doing what, if they're if they're doing something which they're not supposed to, they can be caught here. So it it shows when. what change and who did that change so when is what i missed but basically those three are is what it is people who are new or or less than know about sales for this is audit trail is a good part so you will get caught in audit trail in everything that you do if if somebody wants to find out this is where you can find it finally i move on to play <laughs> finally okay next yeah Oh, you have an option. Uh, yeah, I yes. No one answered it. Oh, very nice. <laughs> so Roshan, you are on podium. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, but is this is this right answer? I want to question that. Like, what yeah. is meant by app and you opening apps? Of course, yes, right. Like, I can go to open and open an app. Why not? Yeah, that's why. Right. How is that? An, yeah. That is what is both A and B? That is what is both A and B? No, but which is A and which is B here? 
Yeah, yeah that's what I said. It's ambiguous. First of all, A and B, and also like why is yeah. why is red red not correct? Uh, with menu, you just you can just hide or uh, do it right, Roshan. Why would yeah, you? So if you go to app menu, so if you go to app menu, that's it. It's called app menu because it's used to navigate between apps, right? So if I want to go from sales cloud to service cloud, for example, or or a custom app that we have built, how do you go to that app? You click on the app menu, and that's when that's how you navigate, right? What is meant by app menu? Is it the uh, app so or uh, option? App launcher. Those nine dots is what I understand. It's the app, app, app launcher. So app launcher. Right? Launcher is wrong, but right? It's the menu. It's the menu, right? It's different, right? Can you can you just I mean just for my understanding, so okay, okay. so I'm probably referring to app launcher. If yeah. you have Salesforce open on any org, uh, uh, what is app menu here? Sir? App menu is more like a reordering app where you can hide certain apps. If you want to limit the view of app launcher, you go through app menu. It's inside the app launcher, once you get right. No, I I'm, app launcher. Do you have any thing open? I don't have anything it's, open. I mean, I, I mean. How is it different from an app? For uh, present, in a particular app. The tabs are present in a particular app. So if you take this cloud. All the objects that, that come under that particular service cloud are called the is called the app menu. We'll check maybe um, clicking on each. Uh, I Rupal is there, sir. And Rupal, you want to answer that, or you have a question too? Uh, yeah, on the top right corner, you can see the app menu. Uh, where do you see? Classic. It is on the right hand side. It's on. And it's in classic. This is the app launcher. Correct. Yeah. Right. That's what I mean. So it's a very class. That's an ambiguous. So there is no app menu in uh, Lightning. That is the app menu. Oh, that's what you mean. You, you mean the oh, you mean the setup. Yeah. So. Uh, so can you go to Prashant? Can you go to Classic? Okay. Yeah, Classic. I know Classic. We all. I think at least I know Classic. It's just a drop down. But I think this. Yeah. So there are two app menus. App. Yeah. Okay. Is it termed app menu here? Yeah, right side is also app menu. Yes, right side, the blue color. Yeah, that's actually an app menu. So if you click on the drop down, that's how you get navigate to the apps to, to, to multiple apps. Oh, okay. This I missed. So app launcher also is a part of that app menu. Oh, okay. Yes, that's why I said it's an ambiguous question. There are multiple aspects to it. Uh, of saying how you open that app is app launcher in classic in Lightning. But if you go to classic, where you rearrange is different. And how you open is actually app menu. So one the one which Mr. Shant is showing is actually the, called an app menu. Maybe in the question, if it is in in Lightning, yeah. that's a very simple question. Yeah. Anyways, nobody got it right, so no harm done. Let's go back. <laughs> but this is knowledgeable. So at least stop and look. Thanks, Rupali. No, but yeah, look, from a classic perspective, yeah, is what it is. App launcher, yeah. app menu. Okay. Okay. Nothing changes. Again, it's faster fingers because everybody knows the answer. I'm, I'm assuming everybody knows the answer. Yeah, the speed of the internet matters here. <laughs> so that same person is still playing against, or maybe if it's unintentional, uh, mm. for that one person, you absolutely cannot change any APEX code. You can still change a UI code in production, like uh, Visual Force or. I'm assuming like or a components as well. I don't know what LWC if it can be changed. I'm assuming uh, it can be. No, it cannot. Can we change LWC in production directly? No, LWC cannot be changed uh, in any org. We have to use uh, uh, VS Code and deploy it. Oh, yeah. We can deploy. We can deploy. Okay, we have. But yeah, we can directly deploy to production. Right? That's what I mean. Like we don't have to go yeah. through sandbox. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Apex definitely not. Okay. Shiram, did you get it wrong? <laughs> okay. Interesting names on the board. Last two questions. Oh, multi select. Multi select double point. Oh, Why do you actually? And I wanted double point service. I 
know what? I'll just play safe. I don't know. I, I, have, know. I actually have a question here. Oh. Lost it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Behind you say, except for text. What do you mean by except for text? In this one? Yeah, the blue, the blue option. Text any other way. Um, I mean, you can directly change, right, uh, in the option itself. You won't have any data loss. It will just uh, re rearrange it to the, that data type for an auto number. Actually, text is there. You don't lose the data. Anything else, you lose the data. Right? It's, the other way, it's the other way around. So if I have um, some random text, so if I have a field which is of text type, OK, mm -hmm. this is for everybody, guys. If I have a field of type text, and then I want to change it to auto number, it is not going to cause data loss. My all the previous data is still going to remain there, right? But if I'm moving from, uh, let's say, a date type field, a date time, or or a pick list field, and I'm changing that. Sorry, the question is changing to, to auto number from any other field. So yeah, if I come from date time field, I'm absolutely going to lose that data. Correct? Yeah. So the way I understand is changing to auto number except for text. I should have understood. So I think a little bit of ambiguity. So I think. It's more of knowledge perspective, not about points here saying if you are coming from text, then you don't lose data. But if you're not coming from text, you lose data. That's what it, the option actually means. Am I right, Prashant? Correct. Correct. Okay. So how about the yellow one? Changing data and date time. What is that supposed to mean? Changing data definitely like uh, it's it's more like um, what is it, 10 characters, 20 character limit. And in date time, if you have a, a time stamp. No, data, what do you mean by data? Data is very generic. Do you, did you mean date there? Is that a spelling mistake? I think it's a uh, spelling mistake there. Okay, so it's supposed to be date, right? Yeah. So that I, was the reason I, why... I, I read it as changing date and date time. <laughs> no, I read I it as changing date rather than changing that's data. That's why I, that's I, why I, said safe. I didn't choose yellow and blue. I knew the green was wrong. So I went for green and I'm still on the podium. Let's go ahead. That's how I ensured I stayed there. But interesting. Interesting. Last question, and suddenly there's a change in the video. Last question. We'll decide everything about today's session. <clears throat> it should be about you. No, it's not about you. Nothing about me. I had a tough time filling this in, but OK. P there is process, OK? Two long options, man. I I couldn't read everything. I just had to. Yeah, wow, yeah not enough time for me actually. Yeah, I just read the first one and uh, chosen the wrong one. <laughs> I mean, the create milestone was the first step there, no? So. Yeah. No, add milestone to enter process also like similar, but anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, so milestone, then the process. Milestone. Add that milestone and then, Adding, then the work yeah. back to code. Hey, Roshan. Roshan, first time, huh? No, this is the second, second time. time. <laughs> second time, okay. Yeah.